good morning uh, all of you uh, since uh, you know i am uh, recording my talk and sending you uh, so even if all of you are not there i suppose that you all are there with me uh, we were discussing about uh, you know manu uh, social laws and uh, in that uh, you know we are discussing the state craft and legal tenets of uh, manu and in the last class i told you that uh, that how manu has classified laws under 18 heads and called it that vyavahar pada and all these uh, you know 18 heads or 18 categories uh, constitute uh, the today's you know legal jurisprudence not only in india but also in you know uh, outside the outside the india and if you see our uh, indian penal code uh, then uh, uh, you you uh, can can find uh, that some of you know all these all these you know heads uh, you you will find in our indian uh, penal code and manu said that uh, this classi classification does not encompasses uh, you know all uh, uh, types of uh, disputes or all types of laws uh, rather these akin types uh, constitute uh, uh, the very important uh, uh, you know you know uh, categories the important uh, you know uh, disputes and the important laws every dispute has a has a law and every law address uh, a particular you know dispute and today we will continue on that have a today we'll finish say you know manu and then we will jump into the kautilya uh, so manu puts greater emphasis on the concept of uh, justice and equity and held that uh, the person who violates the justice is always despicable uh, so uh, today you know we talk about equ equity than than equality there is a distinction between the equity and equality and remember manu at that time he talks about the concept of equity and the and the justice so justice and equity uh, has been emphasized by by manu in the manusmriti and uh, it is always despicable if if somebody you know violates the justice even if the king violates the justice the king is the dispenser of justice he is the original court and appellate tribunal the king presides over the court and in this he is assisted by brahmanas and experienced counselor cases are decided with the principles of local usages and with the institution of sacred laws and this is very important so king is the highest you know a body of justice uh, so once uh, you know king decides then uh, if uh, you are not satisfied with the king's decision then there is no uh, you know uh, above institution than the king right so king is the original uh, you know uh, court and if you have problem with the king's decision then that king himself uh, is the appellate court right so the king gives his judgment and if uh, the king uh, you know fails to give or if you are not satisfied with the king's judgment then again you can appeal to the king to reconsider his decision so in that uh, uh, you know situation the king becomes the appellate you know tribunal the king presides over the court and in this he is assisted by brahmanas an experienced counselor and who is this brahmana i am regularly saying for manu brahmana is not a caste only brahmana means uh, uh, who, who is a brahmana uh, now brahmana means uh a brahmin is the embodiment of the idealization of men 
a symbol of best and highest virtues which a man could acquire. That is Brahmana. Right. So the Brahmana and the experienced counselor. So Brahmana is the symbol of knowledge. And experienced counselor is a symbol of experience. So both knowledge and experience that will assist the king to give judgment. So cases are decided with the principles of local uses and with the institution of sacred laws. So when the king decides a case, then he takes two things into consideration. So the first is the principles of sacred laws. The laws what is mentioned in the Dharma Shastra. And the second, the principles of local uses. I mean the practice of uh, you know, you know, uh, local people. So King was balancing the principle of sacred laws is basically it is a theory. And uh, this uh, uh, principles of local uses is actually the practices. Praxis, practices. So the King balanced theory and practice in order to give the judgment. The King uses knowledge and experience. When I'm saying the king uses knowledge, it means the Brahmins. The king uses Brahmin. When I'm saying the king uses experience, it means the king uses the experienced counselor. So the approach of king in you know producing you know justice or giving justice is actually a balanced approach. A balance between the knowledge and experience and a balance between the theory and practice. So Manu's ideas of justice encompasses the concept of social justice of today. And he calls it the social purpose of justice where the king must protect the rights of those who were unable to do so themselves. <laughs> so you can write a you know paper that what is the contribution of Manu so far as the conceptualization of social justice is concerned. <coughs> so those who are the uh, you know main supporter or propagator <coughs> of social justice or social justice movement today. They rarely refer Manu. So it is important for us to see that whether Manu's ideas of justice, is there a component of social justice in it? If no, then if no, then why should we call it justice at all? If yes, then we need to re-ask <coughs> that. Why contemporary practitioner of social justice movement are rarely referring Manu? This is an important question we need to ask. So Manu's ideas of justice in the Manu's ideas of justice that social component is involved <clears throat> holding society together or you know creating a good life so since <coughs> that social purpose is there in the Manu's concept of justice. So Manu, we can, we can say that social justice is an important part of Manu's concept of justice. Because he's talking about society. He talking, he's talking about <clears throat> he's talking about those persons who are unable to, you know, exercise their right, 
he is saying he is directing the king that the king should protect the rights of those who are unable to do so themselves i mean who are those people who are who cannot protect their right they are the marginalized category so manu talks about the marginalization hence manu is speaking about social justice and we need to ask the second question ki why manu is not being referred when there is any discussion on social justice of today is concerned he adds that it was the king's duty to safeguard the inheritance and other forms of property of a minor until he or she attains the adulthood suppose your parents they died you don't have anybody but there are certain property you have because you inherit certain property with you in such a situation the king <clears throat> it is his king's duty to safeguard those lands of that minor till that minor attains the adulthood now this is very important this is also part of the social justice so minor is a, is also a kind of you know marginalized category a minor is a person who unable to exercise his freedom that is the second aspect of social justice is monu monu's ideas on varnashrama as reflected in his criminal laws particularly those relating to morality and personal hygiene he prescribes different punishment for identical offense based on the caste of the criminal and victim as general rule brahmins are exempted from the capital punishment right so monu has connected the criminal laws with the caste and he prescribes for any identical offense there will be different punishment to different caste people there will be different punishment to different caste people for the same crime and he is saying that the general rule is that the brahmins are exempted from the capital punishment the brahmans cannot be given capital punishment but others can be given <laughs> so it you know gives a impression that manu is a casteist thinker but if you get into the manu then you will find that what manu prescribes this is nothing but a distributive justice system and what is this distributive justice system in the distributive justice system you know the concept like affirmative action the concept like reservation it comes <clears throat> and why this affirmative and reservation is coming it is because there is certain inequality and to reduce that inequality safeguards like affirmative action and reservation is implied that is something called to correct the historical injustice now if you apply this approach to here then you will find that brahmans are the best person khatriya are the next best vaishya are the next best sudra are the ne next best and all these individuals are not same they are different the vaishya is intelligent than the sudra but less intelligent than the khatriya khatriya is intelligent than the vaishya but less intelligent than the brahman and brahman is the as i said is the idealization of man is the highest 
in the hierarchy of knowledge. So when a Sudra does the crime, when the Vaishya does the same crime, and Khatri and Brahman, then since all these individuals are not same, hence punishment cannot be given on the basis on, on same punishment cannot be given to all. And we can see this exercise of justice in Mahabharat. <laughs> and in the Mahabharat, there was a competition between the Yudhishthir and Duryodhana that who is eligible to be a king. And for that, they were trialed in a situation or in a case. And what is that case? That four peoples are convicted or four, four peoples are alleged, not convicted, alleged for a murder case. The four are involved in a murder case. And one belongs to Sudra, one belongs to Vaishya, one belongs to Khetri, and one belongs to Brahmi. And when Duryodhana was asked to solve this or to, to give judgment or to give justice, then Duryodhana said that if the crime is same, punishment should be the same. Then all these people in that meeting, they appreciate Duryodhana. But when that same case was given to Yudhishthir to solve it, then Yudhishthir asked, what is your caste? And after knowing there are four different Varnar caste, then Yudhishthir said that punishment cannot be same for all. If the Sudra has killed or is a part of that murder, then Sudra will be given four years imprisonment because he is less intelligent. <coughs> Vaishya will be given eight years of imprisonment because Vaishya is intelligent than the Sudra. Sudra may commit mistake, but Vaishya cannot commit mistake. And the Khatriya will be given 16 years of imprisonment because Khatriya is better than the Sudra and Vaishya. Vaishya is ignorant than the Khatriya, but Khatriya knows. So far as Brahmin is concerned, the king cannot give cap, you know, capital punishment to the Brahmin because Brahmin is the highest in the hierarchy of knowledge. Khatriya does not have any power. The king belongs to the Khatriya. The Khatriya doesn't have any power to punish the Brahmin. But it is written in the Dharma Shastra, in that situation, Brahmin Nobody will give punishment to Brahmin, rather than Brahmin in his own wish must take the Agni Samadhi, must burn himself alive. And when Yudhishthir gave such a you know, decision or justice, then it created a different kind of situation. Then the person who were appreciating to Duryodhan, they suddenly more appreciated to Yudhishthir for his or for this decision. So the justice given by Yudhishthir is dealt in the Manusmriti. That Brahmin cannot be given capital punishment, but Brahmin should, in his wish, burn himself because he is the highest body of knowledge and the highest body of knowledge cannot do such a crime. It is disgusting. Now to Manu, 
under special circumstances like self defense and similar situation one can take law into his own hands so manu is saying that if somebody is getting tortured if your sister mother is getting tortured then or raped then manu is say that they can take law into their hands even they can kill that person but killing must be justified under the ground of self defense <clears throat> so overall if you see the manu or manu smriti or the social laws of manu smriti then you will find that manu or manu smriti was to spell out the infrastructure of an all embracing society which in course of time became synonymous with hinduism or hindu way of life so hinduism or hindu way of life is not a religion in that sense this hinduism or hindu way of life is nothing but a means of a means of embracing the society and making a strong bondage and or unity and holding together so hinduism is not a religion for manu rather than hinduism is a infrastructure of an all embracing society holding together making unity and in manus age this vast subcontinent what we call india or bharat today was consisted of numerous ethnic and linguistic communities with varying degrees of perceptions and values of life and manu could foresee this cultural and social diversity needed to be kept as an organic entity so in the manus time that diversities were there and manu could foresee that if those diversities cannot be united then it will be fragmented fragmented and there there may be class between them and they may destroy themselves one another so manu thought to unite all the social diversity into an organic entity and that's why he mentioned or he he wrote this text called manusmriti so manusmriti holds society together manus endeavor to use law and politics is for transforming human life to achieve the normatively defined goal normatively defined goal what does it mean what you should do so manusmriti wants to transform the human life by prescribing the humans his or her normative duties so it is through these normative duties individuals can transform their life transform their life and they can achieve a good life so i am ending here i am closing your monu the social laws and i will start the kautal yoga if 
if I compare Kautalya with the Manu, then I will say that Kautalya is more political than Manu. In Manu Smriti, you will find the idealization of man, the idealization of society, and the idealization of love. 